Paizo announced last week that they will now be officially releasing a new campaign, but this campaign that we're talking about and the one that we're interested in is not just for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. No, no, no. Instead, Paizo, the largest TTRPG publishing competitor for Wizards of the Coast, will release this product for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. So, what exactly does it mean? Is, is Paizo giving up? Are they in trouble? No, not at all. But also, maybe, a, a little bit. A lot of D&D players have come to the game during 5th edition, and they may simply not know the interesting history of Paizo and Wizards of the Coast, and these two companies have their history. But it's, it's not maybe as juicy as you may think, because, hey guys, shocker, most of these game designers are friends. They know each other. Hell, some of them have worked for both companies, like Owen K.C. Stevens, who was a part of Paizo's team for years after he briefly, his words, worked with Chris Perkins over at Wizards of the Coast. And when you look at the map, Wizards of the Coast is headquartered in Renton, Washington, whereas Paizo, get this, is headquartered in Redmond, Washington, just 25 minutes away in basically different parts of Seattle. Paizo, in their earliest stages, made content for D&D. In 2002, they acquired the publishing rights to two very popular magazines called Dungeon and Dragon. See kids, magazines used to be these things that you would read every... You know, it doesn't matter. Fast forward the clock a little bit and D&D 3rd Edition had an incredible license that allowed and encouraged other publishers to produce their own content for D&D. This was so cool. But eventually we started getting a little bloat and then an awful lot of bloat and then 4th edition hit. Well, 4E wasn't a very popular game and Wizards struggled getting people to move on to the new system, particularly because publishers kept making content for 3rd edition. So to rectify this, Wizards put out a new license for 4E called the GSL. And that said, look, I'm trying to remember this far back because while actually scripting this video and trying to read the GSL to clarify and confirm that it did say what I think it said, it appears as every link on Google leads back to a dead page on the Wizards of the Coast website. So as far as I can remember, if you wanted to make products for 4E, you had to like stop making products for third edition. And I could be totally making that up, but I'm pretty sure it was a much, much, much more limiting license that even Necromancer Games co-founder called, quote, an unmitigated disaster, end quote. So even if my memory is failing me, the point is the license sucked and third-party companies hated it. So Paizo, along with everybody else, then gets caught in this weird situation where they have the option to keep making content for a system that is no longer being supported at all, but where there is a large pool of customers or making content for the newest version of D&D, but for an obviously smaller player base. So Paizo decides to take their world that they had been cultivating over years and just make a new game called Pathfinder under the third edition license. And the pitch to the masses was simple. If you liked third edition and had spent a bunch of money over the years on third party books and monster manuals, then Pathfinder was for you. It was a streamlined version that seemed to even improve on 3.5 and you don't have to throw out all of your old monster manuals. That's why many people, including myself, still refer to it lovingly as 3.75. Needless to say, in a few years, something happened that no one would have thought possible. Paizo, this little spinoff that once made magazines for D&D, became the number one selling RPG publisher in the world, passing Dungeons and Dragons and new sales and market share. Now, I did say in the world, but I don't actually know how many Dark Eye games were sold in Europe, but whatever, look, okay? Paizo did it, and they became the new king. Obviously, the rest is history. Most of you guys know this. 5e hit and it felt like the love child of 3rd edition, 2nd edition, and basic all in one. Wizards had playtested the hell out of D&D next. And of course, we had Critical Role. Paizo finally pushes out 2nd edition and ironically ran into the same issues as Wizard did with 4th edition, splitting their own player base between Pathfinder 1st first, first edition diehards and players wanting to move on to 2e. And there was of course some really stupid YouTubers out there who were fanboying only for 5e while getting subtweeted by Jason Bowman and blasted on the Pathfinder Reddit for like scaring away any new players. 
look and it struggled, okay? But to be perfectly clear, I'm using struggle as a relative term there because in that first year after its release, Paizo still owned the number two selling game according to the ICV2 and the number three selling game with Starfinder. Unfortunately though, what is misleading with that data is just how large of a gap there was between 5e and everyone else. Let's look at the ICV2 for spring 2021 and we can see something astonishing. The most obvious thing that stands out is that Pathfinder, who just a decade before was the number one selling game in the world, failed to even hold on to the second slot, yet alone compete with 5e at one. Starfinder, of course, has fallen out of the top five altogether, but look at the bottom there. At that number five slot, 5e compatible. Guys, that is astonishing. 5e has such a foothold over the market that third party companies for 5e were outselling Starfinder, Call of Cthulhu, and even games with incredible IPs like Star Wars, which admittedly is a little older now. But again, this isn't the whole story with what Paizo has been dealing with after second edition's release because Roll20 releases a quarterly or report that breaks down games by percentages with two categories, campaigns and users, who basically register that they play a certain game. And if I remember correctly, I believe that users can actually select multiple games if they want, so they don't even have to just choose one. Looking at a similar time frame, quarter one of 2021, we see that Paizo's outlook is bleak. Barely one and a half percentage of all the games on Roll20's platform were Pathfinder second edition games? I mean, based off of that data, we see that Starfinder obviously didn't even break the 0.69% of campaigns. But interestingly enough, Pathfinder First Edition, a game that is well over a decade old now, had a surprisingly healthy 3.5% of all campaigns on the platform. But if you think a 1.5% market share of campaigns couldn't get much worse, unfortunately it does because sliding down to the third graphic, we get on data and growth. And as you can see, not a single Paizo game seems to be growing on Roll20's platform. But what looks to be the final nail in the coffin is the D&D 5e, a game with already the largest market share by far, already is still gaining itself, remaining at minimum as popular as ever. And both of these are confirmed with quarter one of 2022, or report that we can see here. Roughly 365 days later, an interest in Paizo games continues to shrink and 5e continues to expand its absolute market dominance. But before Jason Bowman subtweets me again, I wanted to talk about this stuff today because one, it absolutely fascinates me and it's the kind of content that I enjoy talking about, okay? No offense to the people who enjoy top 10 lists, those are fun too. But two, because I think this is a power move by Paizo. And for all you Dungeons & Dragons 5e fans out there, this new announcement by Paizo should excite you. Because I think what we could be looking at here is new Coke. I know, I know, it's a dated reference. But one that I think fits, because you see Coke and Pepsi were in a battle for soda supremacy. And you might be surprised to find out that at one point, Pepsi, well, they won the battle. In fact, Coke trying to fight back made a decision that their curry Coke flavor just wasn't good enough compared to Pepsi's. So they changed the formula. And guess what? People hated it. It was a disaster. Kind of like going from the number one selling game in the world to a 1.5% share of campaigns on the world's largest VTT. It was such a disaster that in a Hail Mary, Coke had no other choice than to return to its roots and go back to the old formula. But here's the skinny. It was actually a stroke of luck and in a genius marketing move, they called their new, well, old recipe, Coke Classic. It had that, that classical taste you always loved. Well, the rest is history. And Coke is the number one selling soda in the world to this day. Ironically, you could use literally the exact same analogy with fourth edition, kind of. Though not quite, because 4E wasn't technically competing with Paizo exactly right out of the gates. Third edition was good, fourth edition was new Coke, and 5E is of course Coke Classic. But what if Paizo can pull off something in the same vein? Here's the deal with Paizo that 5e players may not know yet. The reason Paizo grew and grew and grew is because, well, 
they can write. They can really, really write and produce some incredible content. Their world building is top notch. Their settings expand to any type of game you want to run and they can produce new campaigns with as good of quality as anybody you will find in the entire tabletop role playing game industry. It was always their strong suit. So, Tui kind of sucked, okay? It happens. Designing a game is hard. I've been working on my own for a couple of years now off and on, and every time we talk about a new mechanic, it is amazing to me at how hard it is to balance all of those little things. But Paizo can create some incredible content, and if you're a D&D 5e player, let me say this, you should be paying attention. Maybe it's because I grew up so damn dirt poor, but to me, $50 is still a lot of money. And if I'm gonna spend $50 of my hard-earned money on a new campaign, I'm pretty confident that picking up the 5e version of Abomination Vaults is gonna be far more enjoyable than the abysmal, abysmal Strixhaven release. You're giving me an old school dungeon crawl by the team at Paizo, and Paizo's already talking about releasing Kingmaker for 5e, not to mention their other Kickstarters. Are you kidding me? Hell to the yes. Age of Ashes sucked. Okay. But it was the first campaign in a, well, let's use the word unpopular system, so at least Redditors can't argue with that. Eh, who am I kidding? I mean, Tyranny of Dragons wasn't exactly a home run either, so sign me up, Paizo. Regardless of how Jason and Eric and Aaron try to spin the move, we're adults with eyes, and we know the truth about why Paizo is moving into the 5e space. My advice to a few individuals at the Paizo team would be this. Don't worry about your egos of how Pathfinder 2e shook out, okay? We don't think that Paizo is hurting for money, but we're not so stupid that we can't see that this is a financial decision, and that's fine. Because frankly, we're excited to see you guys making more content for a system that factually has a larger player base. Sorry, Paizo Reddit. Call me all the names you want. Accuse me of being a fanboy for 5e and hate on me. That's fine but numbers are not subjective. 5e is just more popular. And by the way, 4e wasn't, so it can't just be the brand name in that little red ampersand that's causing such a huge discrepancy in the player base. And before you point all your fingers at the mad, dumb, talking head YouTubers, maybe you should ask yourself why you guys can't get the Pathfinder first edition players, which currently outnumber you roughly three to one to pick up their new game first because they didn't seem to care for it much either. And look, if you're a 5e player out there and you're not sure of how big of a deal is this, with the plethora of options from official 5e content to Kickstarters to DMs Guild materials, let me sell you on the fact that not only can Paizo deliver incredible stories, but Galarion is spectacular. I enjoy Faerun as much as the next fan, Dragonlance too. Galarion is every bit as cool of those settings and maybe more so. Paizo will bring in a new swarm of monsters and their monster design has always been top notch as well. For a high fantasy campaign that will allow you to tell any kind of story that you want and stun and all your players with incredible new monsters and new player feats, you should give Paizo a serious look for your dollars. I mean, it's not like Strixhaven really deserved them, right? I enjoyed making this video and I get that I made fun of pa Pathfinder Reddit, which is gonna go uh, <laughs> it's gonna go really, really well for me, I'm sure. Uh, but look, I wanna pass it over to you guys in the community, and I wanna hear from you. Are you a 5e only player who's never touched a, a Paizo product? Did you check out Pathfinder and hated it, and now you're not sure what to think? Are you an old school player in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, or more, that was there in second edition and third edition when you saw that, that Paizo rise to fame with Dungeon and Dragon and then eventually supplanting with uh, Wizards of the Coast with Pathfinder, you know, are you guys interested in this? Is is having them go back to their roots of making content for, with, for Dungeons and Dragons, is that something you're excited about? Or do you not care? Is it already passed because there's too many other Kickstarters and other stuff to play? I really wanna know what you guys have to say. Let me know in the argument section, which I have a feeling is gonna be pretty rough in this video, uh, and uh, I will look forward to reading over those. If this is your first time here and you love role-playing games as much as I do, I would love to have you subscribe. I put out videos on DM tips, player tips, tutorials, and more stuff like this, so if this sounds like something you might be interested in, hit the subscribe button down below and come join us. 
I, of course, want to give a massive thank you to all of my incredible patrons over at welcomeadventures.com. Guys, thank you so much. It's because of you that I get to keep doing what I love doing, and so for that, I am grateful. If you like this content, you want to support more stuff like this and snag some extra rewards for yourself, welcomeadventures.com is a great way to do that. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody, and as always, may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time.